When you buy your first table saw, you'll find two absolutely critical accessories in the box, a miter gauge and a rip fence. Without these, you simply can't use your saw. Well, you could, but it wouldn't be very safe and you wouldn't get very good cuts. Unfortunately, the miter gauge that comes with a lot of more affordable saws leave a lot to be desired. In this video, I want to show you how you can still get great results with just one of these. And by the way, if you are brand new to woodworking and you need a little help deciding what exactly you need to set up your own shop, even if you just have a small space, I want you to download my free guide to setting up a shop for under a thousand dollars. I've even got a couple of affordable table saws listed there. Head over to mytoollist.com and download it today. Here's some examples of different miter gauges. This is a fancy pants expensive one that a viewer sent me a long time ago. This is the miter gauge that came with this Porter cable saw over 10 years ago. And this is a little one that came with a rigid table saw I used for my weekend woodworker courses. This is the one I'm gonna be focusing on in this video. A miter gauge is used mostly for making cross cuts, cuts across the grain of a board. The one thing you never want to do is try to make a freehand cut on a table saw. Always have your lumber supported. Without that, it's possible that the wood can twist or bind, causing kickback, which will throw it right back at you. Kickback is the leading cause of injury on a table saw. Making a cross cut is simple. With your miter gauge in the miter slot, hold your workpiece firmly against the miter gauge and slowly feed it through the blade. But before you go and make a whole bunch of cuts, it's a good idea to check your miter gauge and make sure that it's at a 90 degree angle to your blade using a square. Your miter gauge should have a positive stop at 90 degrees and one at 45 degrees. This one has a little pin down here that stops it. You can pull it out to make it go to the other side. One way to check this is by running a board through the saw, then butt the ends together along a straight edge. The ends should meet up neatly no matter which way you flip the boards. If they aren't 90 degrees, you'll need to adjust your miter gauge. There should be a hex screw or some way to reset that positive stop. It seems to be different on almost every miter gauge. Check your manual if you can't find it. Next, check how the gauge fits in the miter slot. It should slide easily, but not be so loose that there's a wiggle. If it's not fitting well and there is some wiggle to it, there's a couple of things you can do. One is you can run some tape along one side or both sides, like some masking tape or some vinyl tape. Usually that thin amount is enough to tighten it up. And there's kind of a, an old school method for tightening up loose miter gauges. You just take a nail or a nail set and pound it in a few places along one side. And what that does is it creates kind of a crown as it goes in, it pushes it up a little bit. So you've got these little dimples on there that should make it fit better. And if it gets too tight, then you could just sand those down a little bit. But if you've got one of these kind of miter gauges, it comes with its own adjustments here, these two little expanding plastic rings that spread it to get a nice fit. But the absolute best way to improve your miter gauge is to add an extension fence. This could be any scrap of wood that you have as long as it's straight and not warped. Three quarter inch plywood works great. Your miter gauge should have a couple of holes or slots intended just for this purpose. Most of the time you'll probably want a board that extends to the edge of your table or a little bit off on the left and then extends a little bit past your blade on the right. This will give your workpiece more support for longer boards and give you a cleaner cut with the extension part on the blade side offering support for both sides of the cut, reducing tear out. Okay. 
Another really big advantage to using an auxiliary fence is that you can attach stop blocks to it for making repeated cuts. All you gotta do is clamp a scrap of wood whatever distance from the blade you need to make your cut. One thing to note, since the stop block can potentially trap the board, it's good practice to remove the workpiece after it's past the blade rather than try to hold it and slide it on back. But let's say you need to make a bunch of small cuts. That would require you to move your stop block way over here which would put your fingers way too close to that blade. What I want to do is move my fence over. If you're new to the table saw, you might have an aha moment thinking, ah, I got a great idea. I could use my rip fence as a stop block. I would just measure the size of board I need to cut, lock it down, and then I can take my work piece and use that to make repeated cuts. Don't do this. <laughs> One of the things you absolutely never want to do with a table saw when making a cut all the way through a board is to use a miter gauge in combination with a rip fence. What can happen is when you push the board through, that cutoff piece is going to get trapped between the spinning blade going this way and the rip fence and it's just going to kick back, it's going to hit you, it's going to cause a bad day and you're probably going to spend the rest of the afternoon in the emergency room. Don't do that. Instead, take a wide piece of wood and set it up against your rip fence. Now measure the piece you want to cut from the blade to the edge of the board. Once you got that locked in, pull the scrap to the front of the rip fence, butt your work piece up against it and start cutting. Just make sure that that board doesn't travel along with your work piece and get trapped. If you want to use your miter gauge to make, well, actual miter cuts, say 45 degree angles for a picture frame, you're gonna to wanna to first check to make sure that that 45 degree stop is accurate. You can check this with a combination square or a triangle. Now make another stop block with a 45 degree mitered end. Make one miter cut on the end of two work pieces, or four if you're making a square frame. Then clamp that mitered stop block to your fence at whatever you need the length of the frame to be. Set the mitered end of the work piece in place and hold it tight against the fence to make the opposite cut. And just like making cross cuts with a stop block, when you finish the cut, it's a good idea to remove the work piece rather than try to slide it back. Hey, I want to thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video. I've been using NordVPN personally for almost three years now, so it was really easy for me to agree to a sponsorship. One of the reasons I use NordVPN is because a public Wi-Fi is not a safe way to connect to the internet. I recently got back from a trip to Colorado to visit my dad for his 86th birthday. We spent three days in a hotel in Aspen, and while there, I needed to get a little bit of work done using their public Wi-Fi. No problem, like always, I had my secure internet. With NordVPN, all of your internet data stays safe behind a wall of next generation encryption. I don't really know what that means, but I'll go with it. Look, even, <laughs> even if you're just hanging out at a coffee shop using their Wi-Fi to say, watch videos or listen to the birds. <laughs> it's always with the birds. If you're, say, at a coffee shop using their Wi-Fi to watch videos, you're gonna need a VPN to secure your data. You don't know who that guy is next to you, all hepped up on caffeine trying to hack into your computer. And it's super easy to connect. You can choose from over 5,400 servers in 59 countries. Enjoy the internet with no limits or borders. You can literally connect with just a single button. And with my single NordVPN account, I can connect up to six devices. My phone, my laptop, and my desktop computer are all safe. That leaves me with three more. 
I don't think I'm gonna get any more devices though. Take control of your internet experience today with NordVPN. Right now you can get a two year plan at a huge discount plus four additional months for free when you go to nordvpn.com slash Steve Ramsey. It's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash Steve Ramsey or click on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching everybody.